Marty, Marty, you gotta come back with me. Where? Hack to the future. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, welcome to the latest cyber news. You got me here, Hef. Yeah, doing some play by play from the Threat Intelligence Center. We got, uh, we got Noah here, right? Marty McFly Jr. Oh, yeah, right here. Yeah, uh, well, this is the color commentary. It is like cyber back to the future, man, with this uh, Log4J back in the news. Mm -hmm. It's got an offspring. That's one of our top stories. We also got to talk about the zero days. Man, four, Noah, did you? Can you believe that? Yeah, lots of uh, zero days in commonly used software and yeah, applications. My and gosh, stuff. this Chrome vulnerability, also 4,000 fake job offers going out from hackers, and the latest on the Russian-Ukraine cyber conflict. We're going to talk about that. And of course, uh, we are Security Metrics. We're coming to the Lodge. We're coming to you from the Lodge here at the base of the Silicon Slopes. Not much snow left out there. Uh, we Our job is really to keep you current with the changing threat landscape. We try to take this intelligent approach, give you some peace of mind, help you stay above that security poverty line. And of course, you know, uh, see all those threats you've been missing. And never have a false sense of security. Yeah, Noah with the tagline. Let's kick it off, Noah. Hack to the future. All right, so Noah, let's let's start off with these vulnerabilities because that's really a topic in the news, man. Just a ton of ton of vulnerabilities out there. We'll start with Google. What the heck is going on with this Google Chrome thing? Yeah, so there's a pretty major uh, Chrome security update. So if you've got Google Chrome installed on any of your devices, make sure you go and patch that right now. It's yep. gonna CVE 2022-1096. And where is that? That vulnerability because because usually Google doesn't share we don't get many details about yep. what these vulnerabilities are yeah Google doesn't like us to know everything but uh, we do know that this vulnerability is with the JavaScript engine that's used for Chrome and uh, we also know it's a type confusion in V8 yeah so a JavaScript engine issue and again folks it does it does not just impact Chrome pe people if you're using Microsoft Edge you also need to do an update and by the way the best way to do the update in my opinion I, now I don't know about you Noah but I actually had an issue where my auto update did not take place I had to manually go into Chrome uh, I had to click on the three little dots click on settings and then go down to about Chrome to see what version I was on but it didn't manually update I was kind of shocked about that oh yeah yeah. So point four eight came out last week and then point six oh. So when you check your version number, folks, make sure you're on the right build of Google Chrome. Dot six oh. It needs to end in dot six oh uh, for this version. Another thing that came out was these zero days. Noah, I can't believe, man, Apple's had four zero days since January. Yeah, lots of Apple zero days. And we've got these two more. Uh, these ones are affecting their Macs, iPhones, and iPads. Yeah, and they're collecting them, right? And this is really, Noah, I, as I describe it, it's a two-part story coming down in three-part harmony. Yes, Noah, viruses can, malware can impact Macs. It's such a oh, misconception yeah. out there. Definitely. I've seen uh, like an article that said more malware is being made for the Mac ecosystem than Windows or Linux. Yeah, we got to talk about that. And before we get to that, I just want to say that there is a beautiful chart of all the different zero days that have come out. And really, the only update, though, no, the only update people care about is these connectors. If you're not wireless <laughs> charging, right? You, you, like, how come my connector for my Apple products always fades, breaks, rips, tears? Just, just fix that, Apple, right? But there are these four zero days. Again, folks, get out there, start patching. I did mention this is this is a two part story coming down in, in three-part harmony and that is the next part you mentioned that all this all these threat actors are targeting mac and ios more and more it's, yeah. it's, it's unreal oh, huge, yeah. huge increase in 2021 12 of the 57 zero days out there more than 20 percent were targeted towards apple products and that number is not going away and and there's a lot of reasons for that you know like 10 years ago no it, it, it was like Man, there's not much attacks against Apple products. That's what it seemed like. And it seems like now it's just a plethora of attacks. Oh, yeah. There's tons of attacks out there for Macs. Tons of people are going after them. And uh, a funny story. I was at Best Buy one time shopping for like a keyboard. Yeah. And the sales representative was trying to sell somebody a, a Mac. And one of the things he said is he was like, oh, Macs can't get viruses. Yeah. Was, yeah so buy a Mac. And the person was like, oh, really? Like... It was really sold That's on it. Terrible. And I was like, and I said to him, I was like, oh, actually, Max can get virus. 
No, 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 no. And the, yeah, the yeah, employee, he was like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, who are <laughs> like, you to tell me? Oh, I, I work at Best Buy. I know what I'm talking about. For situational awareness, <laughs> the, the, there are there are three that we're concerned about here in the Threat Intelligence Center. And the three that we're concerned about is Electro Rat. We're also concerned about Silver Sparrow and Mac Ma. These, these malware, these three vari varieties, mm -hmm. three flavors. The one that always gets me, we talked about this in a previous briefing, is the Silver Sparrow which yeah. is targeting the Apple M1 chips. And that's yep. a huge, huge deal, folks. Again, get out there, start patching. That's what that's the bottom line. All right. Uh, there's a lot of other products, though. Firewalls that are getting hit. Uh, Trend Micro did, did some patches. Uh, who else? Yeah, so we got Zixel. I think that's how you pronounce yeah, it. Uh, yeah. Their firewalls were uh, vulnerable to a bypass vulnerability. Pretty big issue. So if you've got one of those firewalls, please go patch it. Patches yeah. out. Yeah. So a lot of vulnerabilities. Industrial control systems are. We're talking here about things like air conditioning systems. We're talking about your elevators, escalators. You got those mm -hmm. things in your environment. Um, you got to be patching those too. And oftentimes they get overlooked. And the next thing you know is a threat actor knows that and they pivot through those doorways into your business. So again, a lot of stuff going on there, vulnerability wise. Switching gears, Noah, let's talk about the top stories, man. And I know yeah. you're dying. You're dying to talk about this. We said hack to the future. You know, I, I did did my best uh, Marty McFly. Well, I did my best Doc Brown impression. All you right. did great. I did. Thank you, yeah. man. I appreciate it. What is this uh, Spring 4 shell? Because we had talked about in December. We talked about Log4j. And now this is like its little sister. It's a little offspring. Tell me yeah. about more about this Spring 4 shell. Yeah. So we had Log4 shell. Now we're going for Spring 4 shell. And this is another vulnerability in the same kind of vein, I guess, same kind of style. Yeah. So it's uh, affecting a lot of stuff, including VMware. Or no, uh, VMware published a list of affected products. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, make sure that nothing in your environment is vulnerable to this because that would be really bad. And that's the challenge. I think, Noah, you know, for defenders out there like mm -hmm. us, you know, if you relax at all on any of this kind of stuff, Log4j, the next thing you know is there's a new flavor, there's a new offspring, yep. Spring for Shell. Specifically, though, Spring is is owned by VMware. It is the most popular Java application development framework out there. We did get some patches last week on the three vulnerabilities, but VMware is not done patching. There's still a lot, folks, yeah. that need to get patched. And if you have it in your environment in any way, shape, or form, you've got to get on top of that. Yeah, and if you're a developer, make sure you're using the newest libraries and things like that, too. Yeah, and the thing is, the threat actors are already on it. Now, there's an interesting part of this story, Noah, and the interesting part of this story is there was an, a quote. I'm going to do air quotes, folks. Air quotes. Accidental disclosure by a Chinese <laughs> researcher. Now, it's, it, it's never an accident, uh, folks. Let me tell you something, all right? It's never an accident. This Chinese researcher said, uh, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disclose exactly what's going on with Spring for Shell. And on the, on the web and my peers, a lot of confusion, man. Like, what, what's, the, what's this about? Is this worse than Log4j? And luckily so far, it hasn't turned into that. But the threat actors mm -hmm. are already developing rootkits to take advantage of spring for shell which i mean again just not not shocked right shocked not shocked deep panda is the threat actor we're talking about here the deep panda advanced persistent threat it is a chinese based hacking group uh, they you know they've been in business for about a decade at least that i know of they have yeah. this new root kit fire chili do you love that name noah it's, a, it's an interesting name you know <laughs> yeah uh deep panda they love to target government defense healthcare industry telecoms financial organizations but what's interesting is their root kit itself and how it operates uh, they are using a stolen digital certificate it looks to see if your computer, if the victim's computer, excuse me, is running in safe mode. And then this is the dangerous part, Noah, about this rootkit, Fire Chili rootkit. It tampers with the registry and it stops malicious processes from being terminated. So if you have it in your environment, the next thing you know is you have a real difficult time trying to get it out of your environment because yeah. it just it won't allow you to stop any DLL file, any process that's been loaded from from stopping. So it even hides the registry keys, the driver registry keys. So real dangerous stuff on how this thing operates. And that is again the log for shell, the little sister that spring could spring for shell. Spring for shell. It's time, man. <laughs> 
All right, Noah, I, Open Office, man, I haven't heard of Open Office in like five, six years. I haven't used it at least. Um, can you tell the audience a little bit about what is Open Office and why it's being impacted with this malware? Yeah, so Open Office is kind of a free alternative to Microsoft Office. I think it comes packaged with a number of uh, Linux distributions. Um, it's open source. So a lot of people in that community like to use it. But if you go to Google and you're searching open office download, uh, the top result is not the actual open office download. What? I know. So Google, I guess, is allowing some uh, ads to rank higher in like the search or so, maybe they're not ads, but it's so malware. The, th the threat yeah. actor is manipulating the rankings in Google yep. to get their malicious website for open office for people to download basically is what you're saying. Yeah, so if you were to go to Google, the top result would be malware instead of the actual open office. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll put up an image here of the screenshot. Again, it's not the best screenshot in the world, but what you see in the red block mm -hmm. is the manipulated search results. So again, the threat actors, it's called Mars Stealer is the malware that's being injected into this site. And again, you see the link. It looks, I mean, very similar to what the openoffice.org website is, the legit yeah. site. But you wouldn't know it. it. This is impacting geographically Canada right now. And the expectation is that you might see this in the United States at some point. But wh what's the lesson learned here, Noah? I want to go out and I want to download a piece of software. What do I need to do? I would say number one thing, if you're going out, going to Google, free download, open office or whatever, uh, make sure you look at the URL. You're going to the right one. Uh, don't click on any of the ads. Yeah. Even if the ad looks exactly like the real one, uh, take a step back and go to the second one down, which is probably going to be legit. Yeah, you got to do your due diligence, folks. And this goes not just for open office, but any piece of software you want to download on your computer, whether yeah. it be WinZip, you name the software, all right? Do, do your due diligence, folks. Be, cl be clear you're not clicking on the wrong one and in installing malware in your, in your home yeah. or and your if business. You're, if you're using Linux, probably just download it from the command line. So yeah. cut Google out of the picture altogether. So Noah, what keeps you up at l late at night? Ooh, fishing. Fishing, Definitely yeah, me fishing. too, man. I'm always worried about employees in my business clicking on phishing links, and now the new attack vector is job offers. And threat actors know that yeah. people are working from home, and they're working remote, and they're, they're getting tons of phishing job offers. Um, can you kind of explain exactly what the heck is going on here? Because I heard something like four to 5,000 fake job offers go out every day. Yeah, I'm seeing that too. Apparently, 4,000 fake job offers are being sent out to people to try and collect their personal information, wow. banking information, uh, which those are things that your new employer would need, right? Your yeah. social security number, uh, probably your bank information to deposit your money if you want to get paid. Yeah, big and, time. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, these hackers are taking advantage of that. They're phishing people with fake jobs and stealing their information. Yeah, and, and you know what's sad? This report came from a vendor called Proofpoint, and it's not just people getting fake job offers, but now you know recruiters, pretend recruiters saying, I need a recruitment fee in order to help you help you find a job. So they're taking advantage of people, oh, and man. they're saying, I need you know your banking information. If, if you want to work for this company, um, the example you, see, you might see on the screen right now is called UNICEF. UNICEF, become an executive personal assistant. This is not from UNICEF, folks, but it looks legit, and people are clicking on it. So again, be careful what you click on in that inbox of yours. The other thing that's going on is uh, we got a report from CrowdStrike about the f these threat actors that are abusing the recruiting website Indeed. Have you ever used Indeed? I haven't, no. Man, it's really popular. I mean, it seems like every Fortune 500 company has uh, has a, a job posted. So what the threat actors are doing is they're making fake recruitment efforts. They're essentially using a PDF file, infecting it with malware, and then sending out and, and at posing as a resume to try to infect employers looking to hire people. Again, wow. you got to be real careful on that stuff. you got to have the scanners working and inspecting all of those PDFs that you're downloading.
All right, so let's uh, get to the Ukraine-Russia cyber war. I know a lot of you love this part of our presentation. Uh, there is there is a lot of uh, stuff going on. I mean, for Russia, Noah, transparency is coming extremely fast. One leak at a time, Noah. Yeah. Russia is getting uh, that transparency. And the leaking will continue until morality improves, man. That's that's what it's coming down to for, for places like Anonymous, which are just on fire. And they are on fire, Noah, with the uh, with the breaches. Um, the thing that's uh, been been kind of blowing us out of the mind is this huge data dump. Did you hear about this last week? What was going on? Yeah, so anonymous, they've been leaking data dumps every couple of days. Wow. It seems like, and they claim to have this uh, 1.2 terabyte data Ooh. dump, which is huge, serious amount of data. Yeah, and so we'll see. Uh, they said they're going to release in the next one to two weeks. We'll see Man, what it has. Russia is getting the largest free pen test of all time, folks. And we got to talk about some of that, too. So it's not just, uh, I mean, we mentioned Anonymous, but they have been going after a lot of different companies. And some of the companies, I, I don't even I don't even know how to say it. Uh, one of the companies is called Ros, Rostprok. Rostprok? I, I'm, I apologize if I'm butchering that name. Mash Oil had 140,000 emails released. It's a Russian Dang. oil firm. The Central Bank of Russia got popped. Yeah. 35,000 files. I mean, central. It's a lot of banking documents. Yeah. Wow. Um, just unbelievable, folks. The Ukrainian Intelligence Service, this was another story we didn't get around to talking about yet. 600 al alleged Russian spies. This happened last week. All that data was released on these spies. Some of the data, I don't know if you had a chance to look at any of it, did you? No, I didn't. No. The FSB agents that had their data released, they had names like James <laughs> Bond. Oh, that was his Skype name. James yeah. Bond 007. James Bond 007. <laughs> uh, you know, they had information about these agents, their drinking status, their ability for their taste for premium cars. I mean, the data wow. is just unbelievable, folks. That's getting released right now. Um, I thought this was interesting too. I think in a in a mm -hmm. previous briefing, we talked about the FCC. Or no, I'm sorry. Uh, we, We've talked about Kaspersky, right? Yes. Yeah. And Italy and France banning Kaspersky from being in their environment. But it's also now the FCC has done something similar. Yeah. So here in the United States, they uh, added Kaspersky to a list of potential national security threats. Wow. Yeah. So again, be careful out there. If you got Kaspersky in your environment, you may want to think twice. Again, you know, what's your risk posture is the question that you need to ask. How much risk are you willing to tolerate? Um, another thing that's been going on is the Russian Civil Aviation Authority got popped. They yeah. had a breach. I thought this was interesting. No data backup. They didn't have their data backed up. How do you how do you not do that for an aviation? You know, folks, the Russian Civil Aviation being breached. We're talking about their files, their aircraft registration numbers, uh, all the mail, all their documents regarding planes and pilots gone, erased from existence. <laughs> all right, you like that? I threw in a little little. Uh, that was good. Back to the future reference. There. I mean, that's isn't that amazing, folks? Not having a backup. Lesson learned. You got to have yeah, a backup. Have your backups. And test your backups. Do it regularly. Yeah, and store them off site, too. Unbelievable. <laughs> Viasat. Are you familiar with Viasat? Yes, it's like a satellite internet company, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they got breached last week, and then we're now finally getting some attribution and understanding who the bad guy is. We know that the Viasat, again, these are this is a very important vendor, folks. You're talking about uh, satellite internet, and you're talking about Acid Rain being the threat actor, and they were hit with wiper malware. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain to the audience what exactly is wiper malware? Yeah, so wiper malware is malware that just deletes everything in its path. It's uh, kind of like scorched earth uh, trying to destroy beyond uh, repair, whatever yeah. it infects. Ooh, this is bad stuff. So imagine, folks, at Viasat, all of their modems, all of their routers, the modem flash memory completely yep. erased, uh, inoperable, no longer to be able to use. You got to reflash it or you got to replace it. Yeah, and the, like the average person that's not really into IT probably couldn't reflash their modem. Yeah. So. Yeah, no doubt. So this is a big deal, folks. So Viasat, again, was hacked. Another thing going on out there is all these compromised WordPress sites. This is not the first time that we talked about WordPress being vulnerable. Tons. There's always seems like there's tons of vulnerabilities to WordPress. Yeah, it's like 
there's new uh, WordPress vulnerabilities every couple months. So yeah, if you have WordPress in your environment, definitely prioritize that for patching. I mean, the threat actors have a very easy time compromising WordPress sites, and that's what they did to launch a denial of service attack against several Ukrainian websites. So this is the kind of attack, folks, that keeps me up at night as well. When you know that there are lots of people, lots of companies, businesses especially in the U.S., that use WordPress, and they're not patching it. you got to get on that patch train, uh, no doubt. Another thing that's been going on is all of Anonymous threatening all these businesses still operating in Russia. I think in a previous briefing we talked about Nestle. Do you remember that? Yeah, we did. So Anonymous was trying to hit Nestle for a while because they said they were going to stay in Russia. Yeah. And I guess this is a similar thing, more companies that are saying they'll continue to do business in Russia, and that's making them a target of Anonymous. Yeah, and, and with the Nestle breach, if you recall, they denied it. They said, no, 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 we weren't breached at all. But there are a ton of other businesses that are still doing business in Russia that are feeling the heat. Decathlon is one of them. Anonymous is just, again, threatening as many businesses as they can to get out of Russia, stop doing business in Russia. They actually published a whole list of all of their... Uh, businesses that are still operating in Russia and they're basically, that's their hit list. Yeah, exactly. This is like kind of like a threat. Um, we're publicly listing your company to all of our supporters and if you don't stop in Russia, like you're next. Yeah, right? yeah. And it's a pretty big list. You can actually see it here. We put up a screenshot of, of part of the list. It's unbelievable, folks, how this cyber war has been playing out. We're kind of in this weird period right now, Noah, in the Russian cyber war, where it's kind of like a cold war, where we're waiting for this data dump from Anonymous, and we're getting bits and pieces of it. But we're also seeing kind of a of a chill with the Russian the Great Russian Firewall that went up. That's yeah. also kind of slowed some things down a little bit. We do get a lot of different threat updates. So one of them is from Google. They put out a threat analysis group. They released some information about the cyber activity in Eastern Europe. Curious Gorge, I love these names. Curious Gorge is one such group that they're tracking. Cold River is another one. They're doing a lot of phishing campaigns, a lot of attacks against U.S.-based uh, non-government uh, offices and so on and think tanks. Another one is number three on our list here. Google Threat Analysis Group is saying Ghostwriter. And we talked about Ghostwriter in the previous briefing, and they were the ones doing the browser to browser. Do you remember that? Yeah, they're the Belarusian group that's doing browser in the browser attacks. Yeah, or uh, phishing. Uh, you attacks. can def definitely take a look at our at our previous briefing if you want to learn more about browser and the browser phishing techniques. This is a very hot topic, folks. This is undetectable phishing techniques, and again, it's being attributed to Ghost Rider. Um, another thing that's been going on, Noah, has been all the internet service providers, and I'm I'm shocked at this number. There are five thousand internet providers in the Ukraine, and only about a hundred are active. Isn't that it? is crazy. Yeah. yeah. So here we are a month into this Russian invasion, and Ukraine is still, for the most part, online. A lot of good, interesting human interest stories mm -hmm. about Ukraine and their ISPs. And one that caught my attention was this story about how they go out and they fix the internet when it gets hit by a missile or a rocket. I thought that was interesting. You yeah. know, poor light, bad weather, cold, constant risk of being killed. Yeah, rockets falling around you, yeah. fixing the internet. And you're trying oh to fix gosh. the internet, right? Yeah. And then meanwhile, while that's going on, the leading internet provider in the Ukraine, Kivastar, uh, they said, hey, we're going to have to cut off subscribers because they're not paying their bills. Which kind of like, wow, man. I mean, you want your internet turned back on in Ukraine. You got to pay your bill. Uh, interesting, right? War ravaged infrastructure and you're not paying your bill. Uh, another story that's been going on is all these breaches, and, and we mentioned a bunch of them before. I, I don't know. There's so many. Like, how do we, I don't know how you keep track of it all, man. Yeah, we could do a whole episode just listing every anonymous attack and breach from this whole conflict. Yeah. Uh, one of them was 62,000 emails from the Marathon Group, which is a Russian investment firm. Uh, that got breached. 51 gigabytes in that breach. 5,000 emails from the Thosis Gr Corporation, which is another Russian investment firm. Another breach was the Russian Agency for Controlling, Censoring the Internet, uh, mass media, they got breached, 817 gigabytes. I, it just doesn't stop, folks. I, I, it's just unbelievable. Every, it feels like every couple of hours, Anonymous is releasing data about breaches, real fascinating stuff. 150,000 emails in the Moscow Chamber of Commerce breach that happened. Another one that we need to talk about here is Anonymous releasing the names 
of Russian sh- soldiers that have committed war crimes. Yeah. It, so there's a lot of evidence online of uh, some horrible things happening in Ukraine, and Anonymous has taken it upon themselves to identify some of the soldiers involved from Russia and leak their personal information, which includes their ranks, passport details, uh, which like which group in the military they're in. It's yeah, interesting. It'll be interesting the fallout that comes from all this if it can be attributed back these deaths and killings that are happening over mm-hmm. in Ukraine, if it can be attributed back be based on the anonymous data that's being released. Yeah. An- another top story that's out there is the anonymous group, I believe it was released, all the Russian state television and broadcasting, 900,000 emails. <laughs> that's a lot of emails. 20 years worth of data they leaked uh, to the to the public. Again, you imagine like if you're like in the NSA, Noah, or you're like FBI, and man, you gotta you got to go through all these documents that need to be translated that's a lot of data that has to be sorted through yeah those translators are gonna have quite the job for I, the next few years i imagine like the job website for fbi and nsa has like russian translator russian translator russian translator like that's the only job we're hiring for right now to go through all of this anonymous data that's been leaked so so where do we where do we go with this story right folks and this is how we're going to end this topic right now is that we're in this waiting period we're waiting for more breaches to be released what was that ter- how many terabytes? 1.22? I think so, yeah. Yeah, 1.22 terabytes of data that Anonymous has sitting on right now that they're trying to sort through and release. So here we are. We're going to wait for that data. We'll have it on a future episode for you. And as we kind of leave today's episode, we hope you had a, an, an, an enjoyable presentation, enjoyable threat briefing. And as always, on behalf of myself here, Hef. And Noah. Yeah. Welcome to Threat Intelligence Center, folks, and have a good one.